So the same thing always happens when a new device launches. The media gets review units ahead of the official launch and we get to use them while we write our review. Then the press embargo lifts, every outlet posts their reviews and videos at the same time, writers and commenters go back and forth, and it's a huge frenzy of opinion and buzz for about a day. And then it all goes away. Sure, there's some follow-up coverage, but after that initial blast, almost no one revisits the device to see how well it's aged. Because we're all on to the next big thing already. So let's do something about it. Let's take another look at a device that's taken a backseat to the new smartphone Goliaths. I'm Michael Fisher. This is Pocket Now. This is the LG Optimus G, and this is episode 19 of After the Buzz. In our October review of the LG Optimus G for AT&T, we called the device an excellent, modern Android smartphone with the proper balance of aesthetics, performance, and utility. And then we promptly forgot about it. Not because those high points were invalid, but because the flagship smartphone landscape got much more crowded in the months that followed. The story of the AT&T Optimus G so far is the story of a good device stymied by timing and inconsistent post-launch support. The Optimus G's build is beautiful from some angles, unremarkable from others, and it can be downright self-destructive in terms of long-term use. The zero-gap IPS display is just as gorgeous as the day we unboxed it, but even with Gorilla Glass 2 protecting it from the elements, we fear for its continued intactness. We're not always the biggest advocates of smartphone cases at Pocket Now, but with a device like this, carrying it naked is just asking for trouble. It's the slipperiest phone we've ever encountered. It'll slide off surfaces that are even remotely angled, and it slides out of pockets so readily it sometimes seems to defy gravity. In fact, we lost an Optimus G in the back of a taxi cab once. And it's all glass construction means that in terms of durability, there are more horror stories than miracle reports out there. The Optimus G isn't the only phone to suffer these issues, but it is a hazard nonetheless. Another slight hit the G takes in the long term is its low profile design. There are nice touches here, but you have to look for them. The LED ring light around the lock button and the totally flush camera lens are good examples. While its beautiful back cover detailing pops under the right light, the device's front side is so unremarkable that it has a hard time standing out in the crowd from its contemporaries. Not every smartphone needs to be a standout showboat in terms of build, of course, but the Optimus G is LG's Halo flagship device outside the phablet space. As such, it's a shame how quickly its industrial design has been eclipsed by the competition. And that gradual obsolescence is carrying over to features as well. The 8 megapixel camera is quite good in normal lighting, but only average in the increasingly buzzworthy low light space, a problem shared by some other manufacturers. More damning is the G's tiny, tinny speakerphone, which is an embarrassment next to Samsung's Galaxy S4 or Nokia's Lumia 920, to say nothing of the HTC One. And its Android skin, while aging a bit more gracefully than Samsung's TouchWiz, definitely doesn't pack the kind of feature set that gets you addicted to using this phone and this phone only. That takes us into software, a curious tale on our AT&T version here. Our initial review criticized the Optimus G for shipping with ice cream sandwich instead of the newer Jelly Bean, and cautioned that updates from LG aren't always guaranteed in a timely fashion, or at all. While the Sprint version of the G received its Jelly Bean update in March, AT&T customers had to wait until April, and even in that area, the rollout hasn't gone terribly smoothly. A long thread on AT&T's customer forum details the problems users have had when trying to update, and indeed our own unit remains stubbornly stuck on 4.0.4, informing us that we have the latest version. That means not only that we're stuck with an older build of Android, but that we're stuck with a few bugs we've grown to hate. Bugs like scrolling lag in the browser, and total crashing of the browser when viewing large pages, and text messages arriving from the wrong contacts in our phone book. Waiting forever for a software update to fix these issues is exactly what we were worried about in our initial review. And while LG isn't the only offender in this regard, it's especially egregious when there's a large gulf in features and performance, as there is between ice cream sandwich and jelly bean. We reached out to AT&T for a comment, but it wasn't available by press time. We'll update the post at Pocket now, if and when the company responds. It's not all doom and gloom. Even on 4.0.4, the Optimus G's skin is incredibly responsive and packs some really compelling visuals, many of which retain their novelty even after repeated use. 
And even if you get tired of the unlock animations or home screen transitions, there are many stock options to choose from. And then there are the really nice touches like the pinch to zoom in messaging and the video player, along with the less useful but sort of flashy Q-slide multitasking. In these regards, LG deserves credit. The Optimus UI continues to impress. Those pluses mean that if you already own an Optimus G, you should still feel pretty good about your purchase, especially if you snagged the Jelly Bean update. Even at 4.0.4, it's still a solid Android smartphone with some nice special features. But if you haven't bought one yet, you'll probably want to give this one a pass. If you need to buy right now, other manufacturers' flagships are just more compelling with more modern chipsets and features. And if you're willing to wait, LG's rumored Optimus G2 is starting to look very impressive indeed, if the leaks are to be believed. So while the Optimus G has aged fairly gracefully overall, it's probably not the Android smartphone to invest in right now. Rather, it's an encouraging reminder to keep an eye on LG's next generation, which will hopefully bring enough pizzazz to retain its novelty a little longer than the previous one. If you'd like to read our full review of the LG Optimus G or check out the other 17 episodes of After the Buzz, visit us at pocketnow.com. But before you go, make sure to follow us on our social networks. Like this video if you did enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube so you don't miss future videos and leave a comment below if you have something to say. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Got shine, can I get a bird please? Oh yeah, there we go. Take that shine right off there. Thank you, Yellowbird. And this is episode 18 of After the Buzz, featuring the LG Optimus G. Wake your ass up. Visit us at pocketnow.com and be sure to follow us on our social feeds where we do a lot of conversing with readers and each other.